Hi, and welcome back to How to F and Crochet. Uh, we're going to go a little crazy today. I'm going to be very ambitious. And this is the Colorado um, headband that I love to wear on Ricky's and I, uh, our hikes out here in beautiful Colorado. Um, we have a lot of trails um, that we go on and many more to explore. But this is um, one of my favorite things to wear is this Colorado headband. It's very simple. Once I show you um, the half double crochet, which is very simple. You've been practicing the chain. You've been practicing the single crochet and you've been practicing how to turn around. So I'm hoping um, you've got all that down. Since you have that down, this is not going to be a problem. You are absolutely going to love this. Now everybody's head size is different, so uh, you know, you're going to have to take it upon yourself and see how many rows you're going to need for your head, because some people have little heads, some people have fat heads, you know, some people got grandkids, cousins, aunts, uncles, blah, blah, blah. So, um, you'll probably want to go as many rows until you're about two to three inches from it touching in the back. So, um, that's really the only reference I can give you. Also, what you want to do to start um, is we're going to do probably about five rows of the blue and then about seven rows of the white and then you'll finish off with the blue. I am using Peacock Blue um, from the Red Heart series. You know, and then you got your basic white, and uh, this is actually called Holly Berry, and this is a lemon yellow. So it's up to you. You can use camouflage blue, you can use gray, I mean, you can be as creative as you want to when it comes to the Colorado headband. So have fun with it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do um, is, of course, you need your tools. So my very trusty uh, hook that I love to use is the i9 5.5. Got that. You need your scissors. And don't forget the bowl. It could be a chip bowl. It could be your salad bowl. I don't care what it is. Hey, use what you got. You don't have to buy a fancy bowl to keep your yarn in. All right. So we're going to put that off to the side, and here's my peacock blue. Now, some people like their headbands wider, some people like it thinner. I like mine at around mm, 12 to 13 of the chain, okay? So here we go. We all know how to chain, right? Because we've been watching my other videos, how to make a chain. So if you haven't watched it, whose fault is that, right? Right. All right, so I'm going to chain, since I want to do um, a, a chain of 12, we're going to do 14. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So the reason I'm doing 14 is so um, we can have that little hole that I'm telling you about that when you turn it over that it's there. Okay. So half double crochet. Are you ready for this? You're ready. You can handle it. All right. So what we're going to do. Okay. Zombie juice. I suppose you want me to take a drink. All right. <sighs> Say hi to Daryl. We all know my favorite character is actually Rick, but he's on my keychain and he's not here right now. So we're just going to... Yeah, we love Daryl too. All right, so you're going to yarn over. Go in 12, right? Let me count just to make sure because even I have to do that. Twelve. I'm in twelve. Pull through. You're gonna have three loops on your hook. Yarn over. Pull through. Check that out. Half double. Okay. Simple. Easy peasy. 
you got this lemon squeezy. All right, so yarn over, go into the next chain, pull through, three on the hook, pull through. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up the chain. Yarn over, put it through the chain, pull through. You've got three loops on the hook. Pull through. Yarn over, go through the chain, grab your yarn, pull through. You've got three on the hook. So, however many you made, um, you'll want to. I like to count, it doesn't bother me. Um, to see where I'm at because if I don't count, I actually put an extra um, crochet in there and then it's all lopsided and then you get all pissed off and it's just not any fun. So you'll want to count your chain. <clears throat> and I think that part's relaxing too is counting. And it's not like you're counting like 80 or 90. So. All right, I'm on my last one, and this is when we talk about the turnaround. But for right now, do you see how much bigger that is than your um, single crochet? So it's the half double crochet is my absolute favorite stitch to use. So there you go. There's one. Now, like I said, you can use 10. You can use 15. You, you make this headband as wide as you want it to be. You're the one who's going to have to wear it, right? Right. So like I said, mine is, my favorite is between 12 and 13. Okay, so here we are. We're going to do the turnaround, right? We all remember how do you turn this bleep around. You're going to uh, chain one, turn it around, wrap the yarn over. There's your first chain to turn around and it's it's right there. You go over, you're gonna have a big hole right here. You don't want that big hole that just looks sloppy. You want this to look neat, professional. You know, you want it to be sweet. You want people to tell you, damn, where'd you get that, right? And you're all proud, you're like, I make them. So, that's what you want. You don't want it to look like you made it. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference. Um, you want to look like you bought it. And that takes practice, that takes time, so. All right, so here we are going through that first V. There it is, okay? So put the yarn over, through, pull your yarn through. There's the three loops. Yarn over, the next V, pull it through, three loops on the hook. Turn it around. All right, so let's finish going across. And you're going to see um, that I messed up. Okay, I'm glad we didn't go that far. I got so excited. <sighs> All right, so here we are at the end again. I apologize. Eh, you only did four stitches. You'll be all right, or if you did any anyway. Okay, um, chain one. Turn it around, and I'm sorry, I forgot to show you, let me put this down for a second, that this is ribbed, as you can see. You see you just see the ribs right here? This helps with the stretch. I've learned that this is the best way um, to have a headband to keep its shape. Uh, I was making headbands um, completely different, and they would get all stretched out, and then people couldn't wear them anymore. So. Um, you know, it's just a learning lesson. Everybody learns at their own pace. So I'm going to show you the rib style. It's actually, it's my favorite because then it stays on. Okay. Okay. So we chain one, turn it around. Now, remember when we did ch uh, chains and I talked about the V and you can either go through the V or you can go through the back we're going to go through the back and that's what's going to create your ribbed effect and also hold the shape of the headband. So again, yarn over, and if you can see right there, not the front, but the back, get that back V. Yarn over, pull through 
all through loop, all three loops. Yarn over, go through the back V, pull through three loops, pull through. The v, see the V? Go through the back. That's what's going to create your ribbing. Maybe I wasn't ready to do this video. This sucks. <sighs> Chain one. Turn it around. Go through that first one there. Yes, I'm talking to myself. Kind of do that when you get older. Alright, I got this now. It's been a little bit since I've made one. Maybe I should have practiced before I started talking to you all. Okay. I went ahead and did a little faster because I've messed up twice. Um, as you can see, you're starting to see the rib effect um, with this half double um, back crochet. That's what I'm, that's what I'm going to call it, half double back crochet. Okay. Put the yarn around. Go through the back V. Pull it up. Three on the hook. Yarn. I'm hoping you can see this. V, the loop furthest away from you, farthest away from you. All right, so just go at your own damn pace. Don't pay attention to me. Probably have to practice this half double anyway. So. Super, super easy. Once you've learned the chain, the single crochet, and the turnaround, you got this. You got this. But we're going to talk about the, the turnaround one more time. So I'm on my second to last back half double crochet. This is why we chain an extra one at the end. So that way you can go through the hole. And it looks nice and neat. It's tight. We like that. Check that out. Check it out. Yeah, I'm not the best teacher in the world, but you know what? But you're going to learn something. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go one more row. <sighs> this is the beauty of having your own YouTube channel. If you mess up, you mess up. I mean, how many times are you going to do takes? Nobody's perfect. All right, so um, chain one. Go into your first V, the back V. Pull through. Pull through. Man, the beauty of your own channel. Whew. You have no idea the freedom I feel making these videos for um, people who don't know how to crochet. Um, it's an expression and an extension of me. Plus, I always like to throw in a little life lesson because God knows I've got a lot of them. And you know what? I'm just trying to right my wrongs and share uh, my mistakes so that hopefully it helps others. So you're, gonna, you're getting a crochet lesson and a life lesson. So that's a two for one. Okay. I think that's damn good. I think today I'm going to talk about lying. This is the excuse I usually hear from people of why they lie to somebody or their partner is because the other person can't handle it. The person that you're with can't handle what you have to say. Now, you're hearing me say that. What do you think? I think it's total bullshit. I think you're with the wrong person or maybe 
maybe you need to have a really serious talk because if you can't tell somebody the truth, I do believe you don't respect them. And I believe it's an, ex it's an excuse not to tell them because you're worried about the retaliation. You shouldn't have to worry about the retaliation of the person that says they love you. Um, if they can't handle it, you know what? That's too bad. That is just too bad. Um, you don't lie. You don't lie about finances. You don't lie about where you've been. You don't lie um, about anything. You know, if they ask you a question, you answer it. This is what happens every time you lie to somebody that you love. Take, for instance, they have to make a decision on any information that you're telling them. They're making decisions on things that have to deal with work, the kids, life, their job, you name it. They're making decisions based on what you're telling them. And if it's a lie, they're going into things misinformed. They don't have the information to make an informed choice. This is why I don't agree with lying. And especially, um, with, like I said, couples I've heard before, well, if I tell him he's just going to get mad and it's just going to cause a lot of, you know what? It's going to cause a lot of, you know what, no matter what, because I'm telling you, they always find out. They always find out. Uh, you can write to me. You can send to my email. You can tell me if I'm wrong. People find out eventually. So you might as well just buck up and get it out of the way. So let's remember that every time you tell a loved one or your partner a lie, they're making decisions based on misinformation. Okay. And think about it too. Would you want them lying to you? Hell no. So let's have some mutual respect in relationships. It doesn't have to be boyfriend, girlfriend, man and wife. It could be your parents. It could be your sister. It could be your cousin. It could be your coworker. Lying never helped anyone. They may have thought for, you know, the time being it got you through it. But you know what it does? It buys you time. Lying buys you time. And like I said, they always find out. Ask anybody. Yeah, I lied. And it, find it could be the next day. It could be a year. It could be 15 years. It could be at the end of your life. They're going to find out you lied. So get it out of the way. Walk through life with a clear conscience, especially with your partner. All right, do you see this? Pretty cool. Okay, so I want you to continue with this. And we're going to do, let's see, I've done one, two, three. I've done four. I'm going to do two more. And then we're going to um, switch over to white. I know, don't be afraid. It's okay. I'm right here with you. It's okay. Oh, man, I hate when that happens. Yeah, when it does the unravel. I hate that. No big deal. All fixed. All better. All right, so let's finish up with two more rows on this headband. This sweet Colorado headband. Why are you going to spend 20 bucks at the store for one of these when you can make them with your very own hands thanks to me which I've heard I'm now called the headless crocheter eh, I'm all right with it all right I'm halfway done with the second to last row do you see how quickly this goes when you use the half double it's amazing there's a reason why it's my favorite Beautiful, clean. <sighs> Amaze myself. Last row. Oh my god, we're going to switch colors. Are you going to be okay? Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. It'll be all right. I... I'm just happy knowing that you're trying to do this. 
most people give up or they think it's too hard or they don't have time. <sighs> excuses, excuses. All right, so we're almost here at the last row. Okay, so I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I know here it is. Oh, the scissors, scary. All right, so I probably cut me off, cut off about four inches. Let's introduce the white. We're probably going to do six or seven white. I tried ten and that was way too much. So let's try about six of the, seven of the white. Seven. Yeah, seven. Okay. So here's the tail of the last of that blue for that row. Here's your white. You're going to want to get as close to the edge as possible with tying the knot. And you're going to want to leave them a little long because we're going to tuck them in at the end. So, see that? As close to the edge as you can get. Don't go too tight because then you're going to scrunch everything up. So, I don't like my stuff to fall apart, especially if I give it to somebody, because that's really embarrassing. But you know what? You can fix it. So I like to do about four or five knots so that it doesn't go anywhere. And then you can go ahead and leave the tails because we're going to go ahead and um, put them in later. Okay. So. Put your chain in there, turn it around, get these little tails out of the way. Can it be a little bit of a pain in the butt sometimes? Yeah, but you're grown. You'll be all right. Back. Man, you can already see how gorgeous that is. Not only do, we, do I live in a beautiful state, but we've got these cool, proud Colorado items. And it's even better when you make them yourself and share them with others they're going to appreciate it how you doing you hanging in there did you survive the cha the color change see you'll be all right coming up to my end Check it out. Gorgeous, darling. Gorgeous. Makes you thirsty making these videos. Parched. Need water. All right. Chain one. <sighs> I, feel, I feel all calmer already. Da, 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 da. All right, I need to finish this up and I don't want to bore you with it. So I'm going to finish the seven and I'm going to I'm going to stop this. I'm going to finish the seven and then we will turn this around and finish up the Colorado headband. And then I'm going to show you how to um, stitch it to, to crochet it together. And then the next video about is going to be um, how to make the sea, the beautiful sea. All right, so here I am so far. So this is a half double, uh, crocheting it in the back part of the V to get that nice ribbed effect, which helps hold the shape um, to your head. Like I said, I used to make them a different way, and they just fall off of people's heads, and that ain't cool. So, all right, let me finish this up, and then I'll be right back, okay? Okay. 
Okay, I'm back. I've done, actually, I've done six of the white. One, two, three, four, five, six um, at the edge. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Cut about four inches. And you're completely done with the white. It does not take much. Now the blue, the peacock blue, uh, we're going to attach again to the, you want to get as close as you can to the edge here. Because I've seen it where people um, don't do a very good job as to the edge as possible, and then when they turn around they have two of the color that they, two or three of the color that they don't want. You know what I'm saying? All right, so if you've gotten this far and not gotten frustrated and you feel good about it, you're a crochet beast. I'm just gonna say it, you are a crochet beast. Okay, you've graduated, crochet beast. All right, here we, oh, look what I did. I cut them off. Eh, I cut them off. All right, that's what I get for not thinking. So let's just, for the sake of time, do like two or three rows, but you do as many as you need. Man, all I keep thinking about is my boo-boo here. Look at that. You know what? It'll be all right. It'll be all right. No use getting mad over cut yarn. Hee hee hee. Right? Right. Going back to freedom. Yeah, I meant to cut that off. <laughs> Um, I like crocheting because I do feel the freedom of creativity. Um, like millions of Americans, I have to work for a living and believe me, what I do is not glamorous. I've told you before, my background is in production. I worked for Kodak for 10 years. Uh, steel, to, steel toe boots, t-shirts, you know, safety glasses, um, uh, earplugs, blah, blah, blah. Worked with an amazing group of people that I still call family. I miss them very much. Um, now, uh, I went on to get my uh, associates in communications, and I hope to someday help um, people in relationships. That is the goal. Uh, hopefully I'll start my podcasts this summer. So I'm hoping that you um, entertain the idea of wanting to hear me talk about uh, my past and uh, things that I've learned. And I, want, I just want to help others. Um, if you see yourself in me and my stories and you know uh, you get something out of it, that's all I could hope for is that you Take what I have to say into considerations because I am the queen of doing absolutely everything wrong in a relationship. And I mean everything. Not gonna lie. So, like I said, for the essence of time, I'm gonna show you how to um, crochet this together because you're gonna wanna keep going until it's about two inches um, from end to end. You want a gap of at least two inches because it's, it's still going to stretch a little bit. But it's going to look fabulous. All right, so in essence, to save time, this is where I'm at right now. So... We're going we're gonna to close this up, and then the next video will be about how to uh, create the sea, the beautiful Colorado sea, and then put it on uh, the white part of your headband. 
So end to end here. Put them together and I and I left this long so it doesn't start unraveling. So here's that corner. Go in the corner. It's okay. It'll be okay. Put it through that big loop that you created. Okay. So now you've got now you've got both on there. So you went through the part where you started. Just go through that chain that you see at the bottom. Put it through the last loop that you created. Yarn over. Pull through the loop. Pull through the beginning of your headband. So to line it up, you have chains here on the bottom. You're going to line up that chain with the chains are, that are at this end. It's very easy. It's ridiculously easy. And I just do a single crochet for this. You can, you can see the chain at the bottom and just go through each, each one. Go through the chain at the bottom of that one, chain on the bottom of that one. You can see it. You, you can't, you can't mess this up. If you miss a loop, no big deal. Again, crocheting is very forgiving, but once you start getting really good at this, you're going to see the difference. So if you miss one this first time, get over it. You are just going to get better and better and better. You are going to have a gorgeous headband at the end of this. One that you're going to be proud to sport. So what I usually do before I end it off is make that big loop. And then I turn it inside out. And I look at the ends to ends to make sure they look good. Okay. So like I said, this is an essence to save time. Just to show you. And like I said, everybody has different size heads, so that's on you. Mine, I usually make um, another, after the white, about another 20, another 20 rows. Yes, I have a fat head. All right, so to close this 